Ooh. Key. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, those caps go, bro. Mango season. Mango season. Mango season, season, baby. The mango season is here. They're growing. Beach season, baby. You're gonna be walking around on the beach in an outfit just like this. Yeah, looking very beachy. Very beachy. No socks on. You gotta be able to have those calves that are just big, juicy, and beefy. So we're gonna dive into how to the, how to do that today. Yeah. Mark's got it. So we'll start off with the anatomy. We're looking at that gastroc soleus complex. Gastrocnemius, it's gonna be our big force producing muscle of the calf. Um, going to originate on the femur. So there's a lateral and medial head to it. Then it's going to come down, insert on the Achilles tendon, calcaneal tendon. Same with the soleus. Soleus is going to have two heads as well, going to attach on the fibula and the tibia, and again, come down and attach on that Achilles tendon. Um, action is going to be to plantar flex the ankle. So it's going to cross that ankle joint, get us up on our toes. Um, also, action of the gastroc, since it crosses the knee joint, it's going to be an assistance in uh, knee flexion. So. Yep. And uh, one thing we can talk about here is the difference between dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And a little tip that you can remember it is plantar, you're planting into the ground. So you're planting and coming up on there. So that's that's a little key. So don't, don't say we never gave you anything. You anatomy students. Good. So we went over the uh, actions, origins, everything about the calf. Um, what we really want to dive into is the, the injuries and something like the Kevin Durant where superstar athlete, just an amazing type athlete, and then he gets his big Achilles injuries. How can we prevent something like that, and how can we keep our superstars on the field? So Mark's gonna dive in here. Yeah, so per usual, when we're talking about injuries, a lot of times we're just looking at force absorption. So this, this calf complex is super important for that, that ground reaction force, being able to take on that force and displace it through, through the chain. So um, when we talk about injury prevention, we're looking at a couple things. One, obviously we wanna have a lot of range of motion, full range of motion in that joint, in that area. So we want to um, loosen up those muscles, make sure nothing's tight, increase that range of motion, which we'll touch on here soon. Again, and then we want to strengthen that muscle. So um, in order to absorb that force, displace that force, we need to have really strong calves. So again, we'll get into strengthening those. But looking at that Achilles injury, um, it's just a matter of lack of strength, lack of force absorption. And when we're talking about seeing it now, even more common, it's just these guys going to plant make, a, make a, sh a sudden movement in that dorsiflexion so that that Achilles tendon is stretched out and if it gets lengthened too much and we can't absorb that force, it pops and you miss a season, Katie. Yep, and it gets super amplified in our um, extreme level of athletes because they're able to produce so much force and a lot of times they have even just a slight immobility in there to where we, we don't produce as much force as they produce and when they're producing that amount of force it puts so much more through that and that's where those weak links are really exposed. So that's something where especially with you elite level athletes, people that are really trying to take their game to the next level, this is where we don't ignore the small stuff, just because we're at a higher level of our game, it's almost more important then. Good, so now that we know that the Achilles injury is a real thing and that we need to focus on it, let's focus on some mobility exercises that you guys can really take home and use with your athletes or yourself if you are an athlete to really attack this issue. So Mark's gonna show us our first one. Yeah, we'll start with kind of the, the basic calf stretch. I know you see this all the time, um, but focus on the intention on this one. So what we're doing is getting our max amount of dorsiflexion on our foot here, pressing up against a rack or a wall, whatever it is, really getting into that, that full range of motion. You can start by really leaning back into it. You should feel this kind of lower calf, lower Achilles, and um, hold that a couple, couple sets, 10 to 15 seconds, stretch it out, keep going through that range of motion. And then what you wanna do is kind of squeeze that glute, squeeze that butt, and lean over, get kind of straight up, and you're gonna feel that shoot way up into the top of your calf. And uh, again, same thing, just kind of working through that full range of motion, lengthening those muscles, and uh, really feeling that stretch loosening them up. Yep, and this is something that, if we're performing this exercise, we're really feeling in the front of that ankle rather than the back. A lot of people, especially a lot of stiff athletes that I have, their joint almost isn't able to open up as much. So Kelly Strutt recommends going to something like a joint distraction exercise here to where we're working that front side of that ankle before we work that calf stretch. So we're able to get in here. So we're just hooking up a uh, band here, right on our ankle, right in that joint. Coming here, we're putting it up on that plate. We're keeping that heel flat on the ground. And we're just, I call these ankle pulses. We're just pushing that knee over top of that toe, creating that shin angle, which we'll talk about why it's so important later. But pushing that knee over top of that toe and really opening up the front of that joint. Good, so now our ankles are nice and loosey-goosey. Our calves are feeling great. How can we really put force through those ankles and be the athletes that we want to become? So 
we go back to our stream theory that we've covered many times over these Anatomy Tuesday videos. Subscribe, check out the past ones. But stream theory. So everything starts at the bottom of the stream, and we'll cover it again in probably the foot video. But it's so important that everything starts here. And if this movement pattern is messed up, which in 90% of athletes it is, everything else above is going to be messed up. You mess up your ankle, a lot of times you'll notice your knees are starting to hurt and that type of thing. So opening up these ankles and efficient movement patterns to these ankles. So one thing Cal Deese talks about is he calls them ankle bleeders. So when there's somebody sprinting, they're not producing that force straight back and through and it's not efficient. A lot of times they're bleeding in or they're bleeding out with those ankles and what he's talked about is stiffening up the elasticity in those ankles to where when we're able to press and we're able to jump everything straight through and we're not bleeding, we don't have weak ankles. So again, the way to do that is to actually do it. And Mark can do it here, a little bit of a intensive bounce so, or a jump. So we're just stiff here and we're really bouncing off the ground and putting a lot of force into the ground here, working those landing mechanics. Repetition, 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 repetition. Again, another thing we can do is a lot of athletes, a lot of sports are single legs. So we do the same thing here. We create that good shit angle here. And we're doing the same thing, putting a lot of force into the ground rapidly, just like our sport. So single leg here, we're going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down force to the ground rapidly, just like our sport, trying to transition what we do in the weight room to the field. And that's really our biggest job as a trainer, as, a, as an athlete, like that's your goal, transition what we do here to the field. Yeah, I just want to touch on, going back to the beginning, the stream theory, really how important that is. Like that is, that is the foundation, the basis of all of our movements start from the ground in all of our sports, right? So if, we're, if we have an imbalance there, if we can't produce force properly through there, that leaks up to who knows where. I mean, like, if you're if you're a guy that has ankle problems in the past, foot problems in the past, and now you see that your your hips are off, you got shoulder problems. Like, this is this is an important part of the stream that we really want to look at. So, you know, it doesn't get the the looks from the girls on the beach and everything, yeah. but it is so critical in performance in sports, force absorption, injury prevention, and. Uh, can't be stressed enough. Yeah, and so we covered intensive hops. So that's something, a lot of plyometrics that we can do during the start of the workout when we're nice and fresh, we're really getting those power outputs. Mm -hmm. um, the other side of things that um, a lot of coaches that I follow and a lot of people that I'm working with, um, they start to transition to extensive hops. So that's a little less dynamic, a little less force to the ground, but really working that landing mechanics. So we're like 50 to 75% here, extensive. And he's just working, bouncing off the ground, bouncing off the ground, bouncing off the ground. And again perfecting that movement pattern, perfecting, yeah, almost like a little bit of a jump rope, but perfecting that movement pattern and that landing pattern. So every single time we jump, it's perfect, it's perfect, it's perfect, getting that volume up in there. The last thing we wanna cover for you guys, and this is a little tip that we work with a lot of athletes that it kind of blows their mind, is shin angles. So where your shin angle is, is where your force is gonna go. So if you guys are starting your sprint, you're starting something like this, and your shin angle is here, and we're starting, we're running, we're nice and balanced here, the first movement we're going to do, all of our force is going to go straight up, so we're going to pop up. In the acceleration phase of a sprint, that's not our goal. We want to stay low during that start. So something you guys can work on is that 45 degree shin angle here. And right now, all my force is going to go straight forward. We're going to go where our shin angle is pointing us. So that's just something you guys can take as athletes and work with, work with your stance, work with your sprint stance to improve our numbers in that 40. Alright, so... All this science-based and nerdy stuff, it's over. Like, ignore the first like four minutes of this video and let's dive into how do we walk on the beach and a girl's just like, what is that? <laughs> oh, it's my calf, because it's so freaking massive. So what we really want to dive in here is how can we get our calves huge? And the biggest thing I want to focus on is frequency, frequency, frequency. I worked with a lot of my athletes, a lot of with my general population, they're like, dude, I just want to grow them, I just want to cows and we'll go on the beach and adding in a hundred calf raises a day and it, it's a money maker it's super simple it's super doesn't cost a lot you don't need any special equipment just a hundred a day trust me three weeks of that your calves are gonna be amazing you're gonna love yourself you're gonna love yourself on the beach yeah <laughs> all right thank you guys for listening hopefully you guys got something out of this Hopefully you guys are part of Yoakum Strength Nation and you can walk to the beach and really represent those big, beefy, juicy mangoes of calves that you want. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe. <laughs>